Imagine this, a bridge stretching over the Mediterranean Sea, linking Spain and Morocco. Sounds epic, right? Think about it. Europe and Africa are practically neighbors. We're talking just a stone's throw away, separated only by a narrow strait of Gibraltar. So, why haven't we built a bridge or a tunnel connecting these two incredible continents? Well, buckle up amigos, let's delve into the complexities behind this seemingly elusive connection. The Strait of Gibraltar is a channel connecting the Mediterranean Sea with the Atlantic Ocean. Lying between southernmost Spain and northwesternmost Africa, it's 36 miles or 58 kilometers long and narrows to 8 miles or 13 kilometers in width between Spain and Morocco. The Strait of Gibraltar is named after the Rock of Gibraltar, a natural land formation at the eastern entrance to the strait. In 711 CE, the area was captured by Arabic commander Tariq Ziyad, who named the mountain Jabal al-Tariq after himself. Gibraltar is an English adaptation of the Arabic words for Mount Tariq. This rock was also known as the Pillars of Hercules. The idea of a fixed road connection through the Strait of Gibraltar goes back to 1869, when a French engineer presented a plan for a tunnel. Since then, the Spanish engineers have examined the possibilities of a tunnel or a great tube. In 1956, a Spanish engineer, Alfonso Peña Boer, produced a project that included a bridge across the strait. Since its first conception in 1800s, several engineers have brought forward designs for a bridge across the strait. In 1996, Professor Tung Yen Lin, an outstanding Chinese-American structural engineer, made a proposal for a crossing that captured the world's attention. His design featured a bridge extending from Point Oliveros in Spain to Point Ceres in Morocco. It had very deep pier towers that were 910 meters tall and a span of 5,000 meters. Another design was published in 2004 by Eugene Sui, an internationally recognized architect and visionary designer. His concept involved building a 5-kilometer long artificial floating island in the middle of the strait. It would be equipped with wind-powered and underwater turbines. The bridge would be 24 lanes wide, including 16 lanes for automobile traffic, 8 lanes for trucks and buses, four standard and two high-speed train tracks. The bridge would be partially submerged to a maximum depth of 200 meters to allow the combined use of the strait for trade and transportation purposes. The ability and monetary impact of organizing such a connection is significant, as it would facilitate trade and streamline transportation between these two significant areas. So, why does such a structure not exist? Well, let's dive more into that. The Strait of Gibraltar has an average depth of around 1,200 feet or 365 meters. It's an essential waterway that connects the Mediterranean Sea to the ocean. Unlike the artificial Suez Canal, the Strait of Gibraltar is much larger and easier for large ships to navigate through, resulting in over 100,000 ships passing through it annually. Given the lucrative nature of the water surrounding the Strait of Gibraltar, it's not surprising that several crucial ports and shipping facilities have been established in the region. Considering the availability of funds from trade and tourism, one might wonder why a bridge connecting these regions has not been built yet. Is it possible to connect southern Spain and northern Morocco with a bridge or a tunnel at the narrowest point of the Strait of Gibraltar, a distance of 14.4 kilometers? What is the scale of such a project? After all, it is far more complex than the construction of commissioning of the Eurotunnel, which bridged the 50 kilometers of the English Channel. The main difficulty in building a tunnel or bridge between the two countries lies in the active fault running deep into the Strait of Gibraltar. This fault marks the friction point between the African tectonic plate to the south and the Eurasian plate to the north. Therefore, part of the pillars of our hypothetical bridge would rest on one of these plates, and part would rest on the other. A tunnel would have to pass through the friction zone to pass from one plate to the other. However, this fault is responsible for the most intense seismic movements in the area, and is under constant stress. That stress would immediately be transmitted to the bridge or tunnel. But the construction of a hypothetical bridge would face new challenges. Firstly, ocean currents are extremely strong in the strait. These would require the construction of large pillars that would have to be concreted in the presence of these currents. Then there are the depths of the strait. 
The supports of the bridge would have to reach heights of an average of 300 meters and up to 900 meters at the deepest points. Finally, we must consider that a bridge across the Strait of Gibraltar should be high enough to allow the passage of large ships without restricting air traffic. However, in addition to possible earthquakes, the bridge deck must be able to cope with underwater currents and strong winds. For all these reasons, studies and approaches still underway generally conclude that, from a technical point of view, the use of ships and ferries is more viable and cost-effective than a bridge or tunnel. If the bridge was built from Europe to Africa, it would boost the economy in both regions, especially in the areas closer to the project. The tunnel would facilitate the movement of people and goods more easily and quickly than by plane or ship and would develop transport in the western Mediterranean. Europe and Africa could be connected and trade could be expanded and developed more effectively. As a result, the European market could have easy access to the African continent's market by entering through Morocco. And Morocco could attract more international tourists and investors through the project. In February 2023, after a high-level bilateral meeting between the Spanish and Moroccan governments, they resolved to relaunch the project for an undersea railway tunnel across the Strait of Gibraltar. As of 2023, the project is planned to start construction in 2030. Spain's Minister of Transport, Raquel Sanchez, mentioned that the two countries will give momentum to the studies of the project, which has been in the works since 1979. The project idea would be to build three tunnels, two single-track tunnels and a surface gallery connected by transversal passages at intervals of 340 meters. The tunnel will be nearly 39 kilometers long, of which 11 kilometers would be exclusively underground and 27.8 kilometers underwater. The construction would take about 10 to 15 years to complete. While the idea of constructing a transport link between Europe and Africa, such as a bridge or tunnel across the Strait of Gibraltar, sounds promising, several significant challenges render it impractical. The region is geologically active, with the friction point between the African and Eurasian tectonic plates causing frequent seismic activity, posing a serious threat to structural integrity. Additionally, these strong ocean currents and deep waters of the strait would require engineering solutions of unprecedented scale and complexity, increasing both construction costs and risks. Finally, the need for high clearance to allow large ships to pass would further complicate the design and construction of such a megastructure. Given these factors, maintaining ferry services remains a more viable and cost-effective option. So, what do you think? Will we be able to see the tunnel connecting these two countries in our lifetime? How do you think this could benefit the economies of Morocco and Spain? Not to mention all of the surrounding countries and the rest of the world. Also, do you think a tunnel or a bridge would be a better way to go about it? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed this video and want more updates on transformative mega projects, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more fascinating content coming your way. And we'll see you in the next one.